Now for more on diabetes in China, we're joined by Juliana Chan, director of the Hong Kong Institute of Diabetes and Obesity at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome, Juliana. Hello, Rochelle. Now help us understand. Good morning. Good morning to you. Why have we seen such an explosion in diabetes rates in Good China? Morning. Well, this is in part due to this rapid urbanization that has been mentioned. Um, I think with urbanization, there are changes in lifestyle, you know, the diet and the exercise that we are talking about. But I think there are also other important issues, for example, the environmental changes, and these include like pollution and smoking and stress. Um, and there are now a lot of data showing uh, that, for example, air pollutants can also, you know, cause uh, obesity and also uh, uh, destroy our um, eyelids to secrete insulin. And also the stress and the smoking uh, are also uh, increasing the risk of diabetes. So this is really more than just a personal problem, but it's a phenomenon of a rapid change in terms of the ecosystem uh, that actually results in this problem. Now you mentioned some of the factors, so let's explore how it affects different people differently in China. So how is it affecting different segments of the, of the population, say old versus young, urban versus rural? Who's most at risk? Well, I think everybody is at risk. Firstly, I think those people who have a family history are extremely at risk because it is a genetic disease. And these people, when they're exposed to these uh, environmental factors, they're more likely to decompensate. So those people who've got a family history uh, need to be screened and they need to be particularly vigilant about their body weight, about their lifestyles. Um, the young people who've got diabetes, um, they face disease for a long time. Uh, and again, these people are more likely to develop critical illnesses uh, during their prime of life. So a lot of the time, these people are uh, less sort of uh, um, are more complacent. But in fact, paradoxically, people who get diabetes young are actually more likely to have a problem in their middle age. Now, on the other hand, um, there is uh, an aging society. So, you know, the fact is, one in four people would, die, would, would, live, would, would develop diabetes by the age of 65. And the question is, why do people get disease earlier? And this is, of course, where the genes and the lifestyle comes in. Right. Uh, but also, with aging society, we're going to see more people with diabetes. And that is compounded by frailty and other comorbidities, like no. uh, those uh, heart disease and even cancer, for example. Now, Juliana, as we reported earlier, China spends around $50 billion treating diabetes and related diseases per year. So with that being said, what aspects of the disease really need the most funding? I think prevention is really important, and there are two issues. Firstly, um, we really need to strengthen the system, the healthcare system. But diabetes is a complex disease, uh, and people live with diabetes for 40 years, for example, if you are diagnosed at the age of 40. And these people need education, they need care, and they need, the they need also uh, periodic assessments because uh, the, most of the risk factors like blood glucose, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, and also body weight, they need to be monitored. And so there has to be a system where you have the healthcare professionals to do it. So you really have, we need to build capacity and also to build um, capability as well. So, you know, an enormous amount of uh, education needs to be done. Secondly, I think there should be more incentives for people to provide preventive care. Currently, there's a lot of incentives for people to provide expensive care, right. a lot of interventions, right? But indeed, you know, preventing diabetes early really saves money and saves life. Uh, and I think uh, this is really where a lot of creativity has to come in. The insurance company has to come in, uh, the government has to come in, uh, and the co-payments and, you know, uh, and also corporate uh, in order to protect the health of the workforce, to protect the health of the people. So, you know, it is an economic issue. Right. And um, I think more people should come in and help the medical professionals to deliver care in a more effective manner now, because the system cannot cope. Now, Juliana, speaking of that, what role are domestic and foreign pharmaceutical companies and other health companies playing in these efforts to fight diabetes in China? Well, I think the Chinese government is doing a lot now. Um, I think um, they are... Uh, uh, introducing a lot of uh, fiscal measures uh, to try and um, 
for example, stop people uh, smoking, and uh, uh, and also, you know, there are also uh, talking about uh, taxes, like you know, sugar tax and things like that, in order to you know help people uh, to reduce the exposure to these uh, to these very common risk factors. Um, I think um, making sure that there is universal health coverage, so that people can uh, have the basic care, right? And these are you know, really having periodic blood tests right. and then going to see some doctors, you know, and nurses and dietitians and having some essential medications. Just to give you an example, right, like some metformin is, of course, really all people should be given that sort of uh, drugs. The majority of people with diabetes will need some drugs right. in order to control their diabetes. Statin is a very important drug, right, you know, but there's huge treatment gaps, like only 10 or 20 percent of people uh, are actually put on these drugs. Even Ju some Juliana. people already had a heart attack. Many of them are not given this drug. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much. Hopefully, so a lot of people think, heed, you know, make heed, heed your insights. We'll have to leave it there. That was Juliana Chan from the Chinese University of Hong Kong.